Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to the lectures. We will conclude the elementary part of the quantum mechanics of hydrogen atom with this uh, part 5, where I shall give a brief description of radial functions and radial distributions of the hydrogen atom. Now, recall that the hydrogen atom wave functions for the Schrodinger equation that is the solutions have been earlier represented by psi with three quantum numbers n, l and m as a function of the three coordinates r theta and phi and this was written as r n l of the radial coordinate r and y l m theta phi this phi or phi, I seem to have mixing these two things, but remember phi or phi in the context, I mean they both mean the same thing for this lecture. The radial function r in L r and the radial distribution that we will consider in this lecture, namely it is r square or in L of r squared okay, or the probability distribution the wave function component and the probability distribution for the radial part. Okay. Now, we have not talked about the solutions of these uh, earlier other than briefly mentioning that the radial functions have with the quantum number n, l and r have the range for the quantum numbers as n equal to 1, 2, 3 all the way up to infinity and L is equal to 0, 1, 2 up to n minus 1 for any n. Therefore, when n is 1, we have the radial function which is r 1 0 of r and the solution of the radial Schrodinger equation using the uh, calculus of differential equations, the solutions of differential equation gives us what are known as log n polynomials and the exponentials and this particular function r 1 r is like exponential minus r by a naught where a naught is the Bohr radius. And 0.59 angstroms. For n equal to 2, we have two solutions namely L equal to 0 and L equal to 1 and the function for L equal to 0 is 1 minus r by 2 a naught times e to the minus r by 2 a naught. Okay. For L equal to 1, the radial function happens to be r times e to the minus r by 2 a naught. Okay. I have neglected the normalization constants or the prefactors. Constants. But if I do not, if I have to write this exactly, then R10 of R is equal to 2 by A0 raised to 3 by 2 e to the minus r by a naught. This normalization constant is obtained by the following procedure namely the psi star n l m 
psi n l m d tau the integral is equal to 1 which when we use the spherical polar coordinates has the following form or equal to 0 to infinity the radial function n l of r squared because this is real and r square dr which is the radial part for the d tau and then you have theta is equal to 0 to pi sin theta d theta integral phi is equal to 0 to 2 pi d phi y l m theta phi the absolute square this has to be 1. Now, you see that the d tau is essentially r square dr d theta sin theta d phi and the rest of it is psi star n l m psi n l m. Therefore, when you do this integral independently of this uh, the theta phi integral note that the definition of y l m y l m's are such that, that this part is 1 and therefore, the radial part is given by this 1 and now you can see immediately why the quantity r n l of r square r square is called the radial probability or radial distribution radial probability or radial distribution because this probability when it is calculated for all values of r from 0 to infinity is equal to 1. Therefore, you see the radial probability in the case of the hydrogen atom is not just the r n l uh, squared, but it is multiplied by the r square and that is important to remember it is not just the square of the function. Let us look at these functions in the pictorial form. The first one is like exponential minus r by a naught this is n is 1 l is 0 and this is a straightforward exponential the radial function and the integral the square of this function if you uh, write the normalization constant also if you write that remember it is 2 by a naught to the 3 by 2. Okay. Therefore, if you do that the integral that you have to worry about for radial probability is r square e to the minus 2 r by a naught as this is the square of the radial function and then you have the multiplied by 4 by a naught cube. Okay. So, this is the radial probability, this is the radial function. Okay. The radial function is given like this and the radial probability if you have to plot it if I have to make a brief plot of this I, I do not have it in the screen here. If I do the plotting as a function of r, if I do the r square, r square the radial probability goes like that. It is 0 at r equal to 0. The function radial function itself is not 0 at r equal to 0, but the radial probability because of this r square is always 0 at the nucleus as the, the value the probability density is 0 and the probability distribution is that this is r square r square uh, the area of this for all the, the under this graph is equal to 1 that is a normalization. What about uh, radial function for the hydrogen atom at n equal to 2? 
there are two values L equal to 0 and L equal to 1. So, if I have to look at the L equal to 2, the functional form if you remember I wrote down is 1 minus r by 2 a naught e to the minus r by 2 a naught. You can see clearly that when r is 0 this is 1. So, you start with some number depending on what the constant in front of a is that is the maximum here. But at r equal to 2 a naught as r increases from 0 to 2 a naught you see that the function drops off while the exponential is also minus r by 2 a naught. So, you see that this function goes down, but for all values sorry yeah for all values of r greater than 2 a naught this will increase because this will increase, but the exponential will decrease therefore, after some time the function goes such that the exponential tapers it off. So, this initial increase is due to this. This is the part of what is known as the Laguerre polynomial, which are solutions for the radial equation. Okay. For L equal to this is L equal to 0, I am sorry, this is the function for L equal to 0, and for L equal to 1. n equal to 2 the radial function that you have is r e to the minus r by 2 a naught with again some free factors that is the normalization constants. You can see that this function is 0 at r equal to 0 as r increases this increases, but this decreases. So, there is a competition between the increasing r up to a point there is a maximum and then the function is reducing due to the uh, exponential even though r is increasing the exponential dominates and therefore, the function goes back to goes to 0 for large values of r. This is the radial function for n equal to 2 l equal to 1 and the radial distribution is r square multiplied by square of this function which is again another r square and e to the minus r by e naught. This is the radial distribution. This is r 2 1 radial function square multiplied by r square. So, again the maximum that happens is quite far away from the uh, the 0. n is equal to 3 has 3 possible functions namely l equal to 0, l equal to 1 and l equal to 2. This one is l equal to 0. The form of the radial function is essentially 3 minus r by 2 sorry. 2 r by a naught plus 2 r square by a naught square. This is the quadratic in front of the function multiplied by e to the minus r by 3 a naught n equal to 3. Okay. The quadratic has two solutions both of which are positive and you can see that those two solutions are these that is the quadratic goes to 0 for these two values of r. If you factor this out this quadratic with the two uh, roots these are the two roots and you can see that when r is 0 the function is uh, positive it is non 0 because of the 3 and the pre factor in front of it the normalization factor in front of it it is somewhere here. And then as r increases if you write this as the two roots uh, quadratic r minus a 1 times r minus a 2 
times e to the minus or by 3 a naught and if a 1 is less than a 2, you can see for or less than a 1 or is also less than a 2. Therefore, this product is positive and the exponential is always positive, but a small number the function is positive between 0 and the first one, first root. Between the first and the second root because this product is negative or is greater than a 1, but less than a 2 the function is negative, but it is also multiplied by e to the minus or by 3 a naught and for or greater than a 2 this is positive. So, the function tends to increase as r square. However, e to the minus r by 3 a naught eventually brings it down to 0. Okay. So, it has two roots called nodes. The previous one has one node m equal to 2 l equal to 0. When n equal to 2, l equal to 1 no nodes. When n is 3, l is 0, there are 2 nodes. When n is 3 and l is 1, the radial function turns out to be 3 1 of r turns out to be barring the proportion the normalization constant it is r times 1 minus r by 6 a naught times e to the minus r by 3 a naught. So, you can see that this is uh, 0 when r is 0 and when r is 6 a naught. So, between 0 and 6 a naught the function increases uh, the uh, and at r equal to 6 a naught it goes to 0. Okay. As, and for all values of r greater than 6 a naught this whole thing is negative and you can see that the function will decrease r square. Okay. But the exponential of minus r by 3 a naught eventually brings it back to 0. Okay. So, here is the maximum and then the function goes to 0 for but only one node. And the last one when you look at n equal to 3, l equal to 2, the function is r square e to the minus r by 3 a naught. This is uh, uh, like the radial function r 3 2 of r. I mean I have not put in the normalization constant, but that is what it is and the r square has only one maximum and then the exponential eventually goes to 0 no nodes. Therefore, the log air polynomials which are there for, uh, for various values of n and l are basically polynomials in the uh, to the, uh, the, the order of the polynomial or the degree of the polynomial is n minus l minus 1. That is the number of radial nodes. because if the polynomial is of this uh, degree it has that many roots. So, you see that when n is uh, 1, l is 0 there are no roots, no nodes. When n is 2, l is 0 that is 1 node, no node then 2, 1, 0. When n is 4 you have 3, 2, 0, 1, 0. So, th the number of nodes are like this and for angular functions we saw already for any l has l nodes. So, the total number of radial plus angular nodes for any function is n minus l minus 1 plus l which is n minus 1. These formulas are somewhat familiar to you from the uh, elementary school introduction of the hydrogen atom functions as 
pictorial functions, but you can see that the radial functions are like this and the radial probability is the square of the radial function multiplied by r square. So, let me conclude by putting all these functions together for each value of n. So, this is for n equal to 2, the two functions are this is l equal to 0 and l equal to 1 gives you an idea that the larger part or the maximum value of these functions are slightly farther from the maximum values that you would see for n equal to 1. This is a statement that the 2s orbital is more extended than the 1s orbital, the maximum for the 2s orbital or the probabilities for the electron in the 2s orbital or maximum when it is slightly farther away uh, compared to the electron being in the 1s orbital where the maximum is closer to the Bohr radius. Okay. And the same thing happens for n equal to 3, the maximum is even shifted further and there are two nodes. So, if you look at the radial square functions namely the r square times r 3 0 if you square if you look at that function the radial probability will look like this quantity here. The radial probability will look somewhat like that okay. with the two nodes corresponding to the points where this polynomial uh, the uh, radial function goes to 0. Okay. And then for 3 1 you will have two maxima and for 3, 3, 3, 2 only one maxima, but the maximas are all towards the farther side meaning that the 3s orbital is much more extended in space than the 2s orbital than the 1s orbital and the maximum of the 3s orbital is quite far away compared to that of the 2s orbital and that is also far away compared to that of the 1s orbital. So, this picture of Bohr having a circular orbits drawn, those circle essentially represent something close to a maximum. We have now replaced the circle by a probability distribution through a more exact treatment uh, of Schrodinger. But then the only question that uh, I would not be able to answer why Schrodinger equation we do not know the answer. Okay. Let me conclude this lecture with a note on the probability statements, probability distributions. The wave functions psi n l m's are chosen to be normalized wave functions. So, if I put all the three coordinates by the abbreviated symbol tau then it is psi star n l m psi n l m tau d tau the integral is equal to 1. This is normalization. From the functions given in the lecture notes for the individual or n l r's and the y l m the integral now takes the specific representation as a triple integral r equal to 0 to infinity, theta is equal to 0 to pi and phi is equal to 0 to 2 pi. You have the radial function square, you have the absolute value of the spherical harmonics theta e squared absolute value. multiplied by the d tau which is r square sin theta d r d theta d phi. Okay. That is equal to 1 and the orthogonality of these wave functions as being solutions of a Hamiltonian which is a Hermitian Hamiltonian. I have again introduced a new term called the Hamiltonian as a Hermitian operator which have real eigenvalues for uh, all of the, all the eigenvalues are real. The 
Hamiltonian operator the wave functions psi n l m tau psi star psi n prime l prime m prime tau d tau is these functions are orthogonal to each other and if I have to write that in the uh, uh, integral notation the uh, answer is the Kronecker delta n n prime Kronecker delta l l prime m m prime this is Kronecker delta meaning delta i j is 1 if i is equal to j delta i j is 0 if i is not equal to j. Therefore, if n is not equal to n prime, if l is not equal to n prime, if m is not equal to n prime, any one of them, any pair of them if they are not equal, the wave function is, uh, they are wave functions are orthogonal and therefore, the wave functions being already normalized are thus known as orthonormal basis functions for all other problems of atoms. If we need to, we can always use the hydrogen atom wave functions as the basis functions, orthonormal basis functions as representing the wave functions for any other atom or any other system of uh, nuclei and electrons together, if we wish to. I mean, we will not use that, but these are analytically known that is analytically represented and we do not have much more of such analytic representations for other atoms. In fact, for any other atom which has more than one electron, we do not have such analytic solutions. Therefore, the hydrogen atom solutions are extremely important. I have not covered the hydrogen atom here in the form of the actual mathematics and the solution of the uh, differential equation that is usually uh, given in a higher or a slightly more advanced course. But please remember we were trying to study the functions and represent them and look at their properties with the confidence that these functions have been derived by mathematicians and physicists and have been shown to be exact. Hydrogen atom is an extremely important problem in the understanding of the quantum mechanics of atoms and molecules and the angular distributions, the radial probabilities, the radial distributions, all these things uh, enhance one's capability in using similar mathematical uh, techniques and tools in the understanding of uh, atoms with many electrons and the only method that we can use uh, for such studies are known as approximation methods. We do not have exact solutions for the differential equations. We use approximation methods known as perturbation methods or variational methods, but those will form part of another course. And as far as this elementary introduction to hydrogen atom is concerned, I will uh, leave the hydrogen atom at this point and move on to looking at the harmonic oscillator in the next set of lectures. Until then, thank you very much. <laughs>